This is the Rambler, and it is the latest cruiser-style commuter e-bike from Hemiway. We've tested most of their bikes in the past, and they usually pack a pretty big punch. So does the Rambler live up to our expectations? Let's take a ride and find out. Hey everyone, I'm John with Electric Bike Report. Just a quick reminder before we go a rambling that we review all kinds of e-bikes here on the channel and we also have more e-bike giveaways coming up. So if you're in the market for one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and little bell icon so you can stay up to date. But back to the star of the show. There are three spec levels with the Rambler. There's the basic model, the upgraded model, and the top of the line premium model that we have here with us today. I'll just be sticking to the details on this version of the bike. There are some differences with motors, drive trains, and brakes, but regardless of which level matches your needs and your budget, all three versions come in pearl white, hemi gray, and this really nice ocean blue color. And while it says it ships as a class three e-bike, we noticed our throttle go up to 25 miles per hour. That's the same as the pedal assist system. Uh, so that technically makes it an unclassified e-bike, but the premium version comes with a Bafung M600 mid-drive motor with 500 watts of nominal output and a maximum of 120 newton meters of torque. In my experience, that all boiled down to just a really fun ride that didn't require a whole lot of effort. This motor was designed for electric mountain bikes and cargo bikes, so it definitely packs some serious power to make the ride feel really easy and relaxed. This version of the bike also uses a torque sensor, which allows the motor to spit out more power when you put more force into your pedaling. So that in combination with the mid-drive motor makes it feel like you're riding a non-electric bike, but also kind of like you have superhero strength since you can do things here that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do without a motor helping you out. So this bike has plenty of power, but it is also super comfortable to ride. Even when I was going over some pretty big bumps and rough spots, the ride was really smooth and that all came down to some of the components here. There's the Trauma suspension fork with 80 millimeters of travel, the Cell Royal saddle, and the 27 and a half inch by 2.4 inch Innova street tires, which all help to absorb vibrations. The cruiser style handlebars were really comfortable as well. I thought the wrist angle and ergonomic faux leather grips just felt really natural to hold on to. There's a nice big 48 volt battery with LG cells in the down tube, and that has 720 watt hours of capacity. The battery is removable, so you can take it out to charge it or just make moving the bike around a little bit easier. And just FYI, neither the Rambler nor its battery are currently UL certified, but our contact at Hemiway says they are in the process of making that happen. For brakes, the bike comes with the Tektro E350 hydraulic si disc system with 180 millimeter rotors. There's a nine speed Shimano Altis drivetrain on this version of the bike, and that includes a 38 tooth chainring and cogs with 13 teeth up to 32 teeth on the cassette. Gotta say it's really nice to see a derailleur guard included there as well. It's just a little bit of extra protection. But up in the cockpit, there's a small black and white Bafung display on the right handlebar that pairs with the M600 motor. The rapid fire shifter is also on that side as well as a little bell. The left side has the thumb operated throttle lever and the control panel, which comes with some nice big buttons to make the bike easy to use. As a commuter bike, you get all of the essential accessories you'd expect. There are front and rear fenders. There's a cargo rack with 33 pounds of capacity with a tail light that functions as a brake light. And then there's a really big headlight that's super bright. So you're definitely gonna stand out on the road with that. 
I think that covers just about everything that comes with the Rambler though, so let's move on and see how it's stacked up in our testing. To test the hydraulic brake system on the Rambler, we pedaled it up to 20 miles per hour, hit the brakes, and then measured the distance the bike traveled as it came to a complete stop. We took three measurements and then averaged those results. So the end result was a stopping distance of 23 feet 11 inches, so there was definitely some room for improvement. This result is exactly two feet beyond our current running average for all of the commuter and cruiser style e-bikes we've tested with hydraulic brake systems. And while we didn't have any problems with the brakes during normal use, we definitely like to see an upgrade for a bit better performance, especially on the premium version of the bike. In my time on the Rambler, I definitely noticed a longer than usual stopping time, but I do want to give the bike some real credit. The 2.4 inch wide tires here really helped to keep it feeling stable. I noticed that the rear wheel wanted to lock up a little bit if I really laid into the brakes, but the bike stayed pretty straight and I didn't notice any sort of fishtailing. I took the Rambler out to get a feel for that 500 watt mid-drive motor and see how fast the bike could go in each of its five pedal assist settings. Let's check it out and then I'll meet you back here again shortly. All right, so we are here on the Hemiway Rambler Premium to do a speed test. Uh, riding here with no motor assistance. So it looks like we're kind of going around 11 and a half, 12 miles per hour. Let's bump, bump. Let's bump up to PAS1, there we go. Uh, we will get up to sixth gear here. So you hear that motor engage and with the torque sensor, uh, you know, the bike is responding to how much pressure I'm applying. And I'm gonna try to keep that consistent throughout the test for accuracy. Uh, also sort of a mid-range level of effort. So here we'll get up to seventh gear. PS1, looks like we're gonna go right around 16 miles per hour, maybe 16 and a half. Let's jump up to PAS2. And so stepping up through the pedal assist levels, basically now I'm just getting a little bit more from the motor with every pedal stroke, and that'll keep increasing as we step up. Uh, so here, kind of landing around, let's say 18 and a half, 19 miles per hour, something like that. Let's jump up to PAS3. And I'm gonna bump up into ninth gear now, which is actually the top gear. So I mean, I, you know, I feel very comfortable at this pace and this level of effort. Kind of going right around 20 miles an hour here. Let's go up to PAS4. Getting even more from the motor at this point. And we'll get around this bend, but looks like we're gonna be up around yeah, let's say 21, 21 and a half maybe. And then we'll finish it off in PAS5 with the maximum amount of assistance. And, you know, here going, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of right around 23 miles per hour. So we'll call that our speed test on the Hemiway Rambler. So I have to say, I really like the combination of that mid-drive motor and the torque sensor. The bike did pretty well when I was pedaling with no help from the motor. I measured 11.8 miles per hour there, but even the lowest pedal assist setting made a huge difference in speed. I measured 16.5 miles per hour in PAS1 and then had pretty even jumps in speed when I stepped up through the other four settings. I hit 19 miles per hour in PAS2, 20.1 miles per hour in PAS3, 21.4 in PAS4, and 23.2 miles per hour in PAS5. So again, the motor is limited to 25 miles per hour, and I was able to reach that with a bit of extra leg power. I kept a pretty consistent, moderate level of effort to establish sort of a middle ground with the bike speeds, and that's the beauty of the torque sensor here. You can get going a little faster if you work a little harder than I did, but you also don't have to go that fast if you take on a more casual approach. Another thing about the setup on the Rambler here is that your speeds aren't really dictated by the pedal assist system, just the amount of work you wanna do. 
You get more from the motor with every pedal stroke in PAS5 than you do in PAS1, but with five settings to choose from, you can decide how much of a workout you might want to get on your rides. I mentioned earlier that the throttle could reach 25 miles per hour, and that's definitely something that we'd like to see addressed with the bike's programming. Just for the sake of safety and legality, we'd like to see that limited to the usual class two limit of 20 miles per hour. But with the pedal assist system, I thought the speed and power distribution between settings was really good and that made it easy to figure out what level of assistance felt best. I liked that the lowest setting had a really impactful level of power, and I also really liked that this bike had a little extra breathing room at the top end of its speeds with the 25 mile per hour limit. We measured really good results from the Rambler Premium in our range test. We rode the bike two separate times in PAS1 and PAS5 until the battery died to get a high and low end bracket. Based on what we measured, you can expect your range to land somewhere between 42.9 and 55.9 miles, depending on the level of pedal assist you prefer. Our tests took between about 2 hours and 20 minutes and 4 hours and 10 minutes, so you can plan your rides within that time frame. Hemiway advertises up to 55 miles for the bike, so we were really happy that our results lined right up with that. We actually got a bit more out of the bike than we expected, but that is a natural side effect of mid-drive motors with torque sensors. They end up splitting the work with the rider, so they don't use as much energy. Based on the 500 watt motor and 720 watt hour battery, we expected our PAS5 test to give us about 35 miles over the course of an hour and a half, but we got nearly an extra hour on the bike and about eight extra miles, so things were definitely pretty efficient here. Just keep in mind that if you're riding really hard in PAS5 and climbing a bunch of hills, you might end up with less mileage than we did, but it goes the other way as well. If you're in PAS1 and pedaling casually on flat ground, you might do a little better. Either way, we're pleased with the results we measured. The Rambler definitely has plenty of range if you're using the bike as a daily commuter, and if you're just taking some short evening rides to relax, you won't have to worry about charging for quite a while. We tested the Rambler Premium's hill climbing abilities at our infamous test hill, which is called Hellhole Trail. I'm gonna pass you off to Justin so you can see how the Rambler did with its throttle and also with Justin pedaling in PAS5. All right, so here I'm on the throttle hill test with the Himaway Rambler with the Defang M600 mid-drive motor. Um, yeah, and usually I'm not a huge fan of throttles on mid-drives, but this style bike, I actually don't mind it. I, I kind of like it. Um, I've got the bike in fourth gear and so far it's done really well kind of held right about nine miles an hour through that first you know super steep section um and i think fourth gear is the right gear for the for this throttle test so i think we've got this dialed in really well through this next section i'm going to let you let you listen to the motor there is a whine to it you can hear it um i would say it's a a little bit louder than some other mid-drive motors but not bad at all um it's not really annoying so let's 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 let, let you listen so yeah it's there you can hear it a little louder than like the broza um that i just recently tested than some of the others but not too bad at all and the power I've been pretty impressed so far. Um, kind of holding steady at above eight miles per hour. I'm really interested to see what the res these results are, but I think it's gonna be one of the better ones that we've done with mid drives on throttle. Um, yeah, so let's go to the results and see how it did. Okay, now we're on the pedal test with the Himaway, with the Himaway Rambler. Um, curious to see how this one feels, again, given that it's a mid drive. Um, sometimes I have to push a little bit harder up this hill. So far, this is doing pretty well. Um, holding about 10, nine, and about eight miles per hour through that section. Um, and I'll say, 
in terms of the effort that I'm putting in, I'm able to put a little less effort in than I do on some mid drives. So this does feel fairly powerful. Um, where I could probably go even a little slower up this if I was really out of, you know, not wanting to get any workout in type thing. Um, so let's listen to the motor. So you definitely hear that. And as I get into a lower gear where I'm spinning those cranks more, you hear that wind just a little bit more on the high pitch side, but not bad. And in general, this feels pretty good um, power wise climbing up the hill. So we'll see what the results come in at. But overall, for a mid drive bike, this still has a natural feeling. It feels to be a little more on, towards the powerful side of things. So we'll see if the, if the results back that up. So the throttle power was pretty impressive on this bike. As you can see, it really had no trouble at all climbing up that path. Our results came in at one minute and 31 seconds with an average speed of 11.9 miles per hour, which is definitely better than average when looking at similar bikes we've tested. Our results in PAS5 were one minute and 38 seconds with a speed of 11.1 .1 miles per hour, so a little slower than the throttle, but that's not uncommon with mid-drive motors. This result was a bit more average when compared to similar bikes, but again, you could see that Justin had a pretty easy time getting up the hill, so average is really good. We were really happy with these results, and also with the fact that this bike did include a throttle. Not all mid-drives do, and you actually get an advantage with throttles on mid-drives since you can make use of the bike's gearing in situations like our hill test. The power of that 500 watt motor really came into play here and showed that it can handle just about anything. You definitely have some options when it comes to really steep hills. The bike can do all the work for you if you don't want to pedal, but if you do, you're not going to have to work very hard. There's a lot to talk about with the Rambler's ride quality, so let's take the bike out for another spin while we go over the main elements that contribute to its really great feel. Okay, so we are here on the Hemiway Rambler Premium to give you an idea of what it's like to ride. So this is a hybrid commuter slash cruiser e-bike, and with that you get a relatively upright riding position. I have a slight forward lean here just with the uh, reach distance on the bike, but relatively upright. And there's just a single frame size for the Rambler, which Hemiway says can fit those between five foot two and six foot four. Uh, not a lot of adjustment here. You get some in the seat post, but uh, with the standard style stem here, your reach and your handlebar height are more or less set. You could sort of loosen things up in the front and rotate the handlebars to change your hand position a little bit, but uh, for the most part, what you see is what you get. But very comfortable ride here. Uh, the Innova 27 and a half inch by 2.4 inch tires uh, provide some really nice stability and kind of also help to soak up some extra bumps. But of course you get the front suspension fork to help out with that as well as well as a really nicely padded, very comfortable Cell Royal saddle. Uh, so just that combination, very smooth, very comfortable ride. And then at least on the premium version of the bike that we have here, you get the Bafung M600 mid-drive motor with a torque sensor. So you can hear that right now. And, you know, as I apply a little bit more effort, it gives me a little bit more of a boost with every pedal stroke. Uh, so all in all, very nice package of features. Let's uh, jump back to the studio and talk a little bit more. So I mentioned that there is just a single frame size here. And while I found the bike to be really comfortable to ride for long periods of time, I did find the reach distance to be a bit long. And I think it would be nice for those on the taller and shorter end of the spectrum to have a bit more customization in terms of fit. We'd like to see an adjustable stem included in the future. That's a really common feature on commuter style e-bikes, and I think it would make a lot of sense here. 
Even with the longer reach though, I thought the handling was a really big highlight. The Rambler felt really nimble and responsive, which I like on a bike that I might be moving pretty quickly on. I found the display to be a little tough to read when moving. The speedometer portion was fine, but the battery percentage was really tiny. Considering the Rambler Premium's price point of over $2,000, I'd really like to see a larger full color display to make checking ride data a bit easier, but there were some cool features about the display and the bike system that I did really appreciate. First, the headlight includes an automatic light sensor that you can adjust the sensitivity with, so you can make sure the light comes on when you need it to. And second, you can adjust the number of pedal assist settings to get a little bit more customization there. The default programming is set to five settings, but you can go up to nine or drop down to three, whatever works for you. All in all though, I think the Rambler has a lot of good things going for it in terms of its ride quality, a couple of little things that could be improved, but I think it's got it where it counts. Comfort is really the big thing here. This bike just rides super smoothly and feels really responsive and natural. With every e-bike that I test, I really try to get to the personality of the bike. And with the Rambler Premium, the heart and soul is definitely its relaxed feel. Even if I was pedaling in a hurry to get where I was going, I still felt like I was having fun, I was taking it pretty easy, and I didn't feel stressed out at all. We all know how much the morning commute can be a little agitating, so that sort of easygoing feel really stood out to me here. All in all, we measured really solid performance from this bike. We'd like to see a more consistent and effective brake system in the future, and we'd like to see the throttle limited to 20 miles per hour, but otherwise we measured great range, great hill climbing ability, and a nice intuitive distribution of speeds with a super adaptive motor. I think that if you're looking for a super comfortable and casual feeling bike to have some fun on, the Rambler Premium is gonna be a great fit. It'll get you to and from work enjoyably, It'll help you take a load off if you're feeling stressed at the end of the day, and if you want to take some long, relaxing rides on the weekends, it's got you covered there as well. If you want to take a closer look at the premium model or the other two spec levels, we'll leave a link to the bike's website in the video description down below. Please make sure to use that link if you plan to make a purchase. It's a way to help support our channel with no additional cost to you. And if you want to dive in a bit deeper, we'll leave a link to my written review of the bike in the description as well. Thanks for watching and taking a ride with me today. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Hemiway Rambler Premium.